a princely state or Indian state, was a nominally sovereign entity of India during the British Raj that was not directly governed by the British, but rather by a local ruler under a form of indirect rule, subject to a subsidiary alliance in the suzerainty or paramountcy of the British Crown. There were officially 565 princely states in India at the time of independence in 1947, apart from thousands of zamindaris and Jagas. By 1950, almost all these states had acceded to either India or Pakistan, nine to Pakistan and the rest to India. The accession process was largely peaceful except in the case of Jammu and Kashmir and Hyderabad. Some 200 of the states had an area of less than 25 square kilometers. The princes who had acceded to India were granted a pension as per the terms of accession. Some of the erstwhile princes were even appointed Raj Remux or governor of federations of two or more princely states. The privy purses were, however, abolished in 1971. The states which acceded to Pakistan retained their autonomy until the promulgation of a new constitution in 1956 when all these states without exception were merged with the province of West Pakistan. British relationship with the princely states, India under the British Raj consisted of two types of territory, British India and the native states or princely states. In its Interpretation Act 1889, the British Parliament adopted the following definitions. 4. The expression British India shall mean all territories and places within Her Majesty's dominions which are for the time being governed by Her Majesty through the Governor-General of India or through any Governor or other officer subordinate to the Governor-General of India. 5. The expression India shall mean British India together with any territories of any native prince or chief under the suzerainty of Her Majesty exercised through the Governor-General of India or through any governor or other officer subordinate to the Governor-General of India. In general the term British India had been used also to refer to the regions under the rule of the East India Company in India from 1774 to 1858. The term has also been used to refer to the British in India. The British Crown's suzerainty over 175 princely states, generally the largest and most important, was exercised in the name of the British Crown by the Central Government of British India under the Viceroy. The remaining approximately 400 states were influenced by agents answerable to the provincial governments of British India under a Governor, Lieutenant Governor, or Chief Commissioner. A clear distinction between Dominion and suzerainty was supplied by the jurisdiction of the Courts of Law, the law of British India rested upon the legislation enacted by the British Parliament, and the legislative powers those laws vested in the various governments of British India, both central and local. In contrast, the courts of the princely states existed under the authority of the respective rulers of those states. Princely Status and Titles The Indian rulers bore various titles a euro including Katrapati or Badshah, Maharaja or Raja, Raj, Nizam, Wadalia, Norb, Nayak, Wali, Inamda, Saranjanda and many others. Whatever the literal meaning and traditional prestige of the ruler's actual title, the British government translated them all as prince, to avoid the implication that the native rulers could be kings with status equal to that of the British monarch. More prestigious Hindu rulers often used the title Raja, Raj, or a variant such as Rana, Rao, Rawat, or Rur. Also in this class were several Thakurs or Thakurs and a few particular titles such as Sada, Mankari, Deshmukh, Zardisai, Raja Namda, Saranjamda. The most prestigious Hindu rulers usually had the prefix Maha in their titles, as in Maharaja, Maharana, Mahare, etc. The states of Travancore and Cochin had queens regnant styled Maharani, generally the female forms applied only to sisters, spouses and widows, who could however act as regents. There were also compound titles, such as Rajadi Raj, Raj Irajagan, often relics from an elaborate system of hierarchical titles under the Mughal emperors. For example, the addition of the adjective Baj raised the status of the title holder one level. Furthermore most dynasties used a variety of additional titles, such as Varma in South India. This should not be confused with various titles and suffixes not specific to princes but used by entirexts. The Sikh princes concentrated at Punjab usually adopted Hindu-type titles when attaining princely rank. 
at a lower level Sada was used. Muslim rulers almost all used the title Nawab, with the prominent exceptions of the Nizam of Hyderabad and Berra, the Wali Khan of Khalid and the Wali of Swat. Other less usual titles included Darbar Sahib, Dewan, Jam, Mater and Mir. Precedence and prestige, however, the actual importance of a princely state cannot be read from the title of its ruler, which was usually granted as a favor, often in recognition for loyalty and services rendered to the Mughal Empire. Although some titles were raised once or even repeatedly, there was no automatic updating when a state gained or lost real power. In fact, princely titles were even awarded to holders of domains and even zamindars, which were not states at all. Various sources give significantly different numbers of states and domains of the various types. Even in general, the definition of titles and domains are clearly not well established. In addition to their titles all princely rulers were eligible to be appointed to certain British orders of chivalry associated with India, the most exalted order of the Star of India and the most eminent order of the Indian Empire. Women could be appointed as knights of these orders. Rulers entitled to 21 gun and 19 gun salutes were normally appointed to the highest rank, Knight Grand Commander of the Order of the Star of India. Many Indian princes served in the British Army, the Indian Army, or in local guard or police forces, often rising to high ranks. Some even served while on the throne. Many of these were appointed as an aide de camp either to the ruling prince of their own house or indeed to the British King Emperor. Many saw active service, both on the subcontinent and on other fronts, during both world wars. Apart from those members of the princely houses who entered military service and who distinguished themselves, a good number of princes received honorary ranks as officers in the British and Indian armed forces. Those ranks were conferred based on several factors, including their heritage, lineage, gun salute as well as personal character or martial traditions. After the First and Second World Wars, the princely rulers of several of the major states, including Gwalior, Patiala, Bikana, Jaipur, Jodhpur, Jammu and Kashmir and Hyderabad, were given honorary general officer ranks as a result of their state's contributions to the war effort. Lieutenant Flight Lieutenant or Lieutenant Commander Squadron Leader, Commander Wing Commander or Captain Group Captain, Commodore Air Commodore, Major General Air Vice Marshal, Lieutenant General, General. It was also not unusual for members of princely houses to be appointed to various colonial offices, often far from their native state, or to enter the diplomatic corps. Equal salute states equals. The gun salute system was used to set unambiguously the precedence of the major rulers in the area in which the British East India Company was active, or generally of the states in their dynasties. As heads of a state, Certain princely rulers were entitled to be saluted by the firing of an odd number of guns between 3 and 21, with a greater number of guns indicating greater prestige. Generally, the number of guns remained the same for all successive rulers of a particular state, but individual princes were sometimes granted additional guns on a personal basis. Furthermore, rulers were sometimes granted additional gun salutes within their own territories only, constituting a semi promotion. The states of all these rulers were known as salute states. After Indian independence, the Maharana of Udaipur displaced the Nizam of Hyderabad as the most senior prince in India, because Hyderabad state had not acceded to the new dominion of India, and the Star Highness was extended to all rulers entitled to nine gun salutes. When the princely states had been integrated into the Indian Union, their rulers were promised continued privileges and an income for their upkeep. Subsequently, when the Indian government abolished the Privy Purse in 1971, the whole princely order ceased to be recognized under Indian law, although many families continue to retain their social prestige informally. Some descendants of the rulers are still prominent in regional or national politics, diplomacy, business and high society. At the time of Indian independence, only five rulers are Euro the Nizam of Hyderabad, the Maharaja of Mysore the Maharaja of Jammu and Kashmir state, the Maharaja Garakwad of Baroda and the Maharaja Sindhya of Gwalior Euro were entitled to a 21-gun salute. Five more Euro the Norab of Bhopal, the Maharaja Holkar of Indore, the Maharana of Udaipur, 
the Maharaja of Kohapur and the Maharaja of Travancore Euro were entitled to 19 gun salutes. The most senior princely ruler was the Nizam of Hyderabad, who was entitled to the unique style Exalted Highness. Other princely rulers entitled to salutes of 11 guns or more were entitled to the style Highness. No special style was used by rulers entitled to lesser gun salutes. As paramount ruler, and successor to the Mughals, the British King Emperor of India, for whom the style of majesty was reserved, was entitled to an imperial 101 gun salute a euro in the European tradition also the number of guns fired to announce the birth of an heir to the throne. Equals non-salute states equals, there was no strict correlation between the levels of the titles and the classes of gun salutes, the real measure of precedence, but merely a growing percentage of higher titles and classes with more guns. As a rule a majority of gun salute princes had at least nine, with numbers below that usually the prerogative of Arab sheikhs of the Aden Protectorate, also under British protection. There were many so-called non-salute states of lower prestige. Since the total of salute states was 117 and there were more than 500 princely states, most rulers were not entitled to any gun salute. Among these, not all of them were minor rulers. The Maharaja of Sagurja, for example, was ruling over a large territory, but was not entitled to any gun salute. A number of princes, in the broadest sense of the term, were not even acknowledged as such. On the other hand, the dynasties of certain defunct states were allowed to keep their princely status a euro they were known as political pensioners, such as the law of Oud. There were also certain estates of British India which were rendered as political sarin jams, having equal princely status. Though none of these princes were awarded gun salutes, princely titles in this category were recognized as a form of vassals of salute states, and were not even in direct relation with the paramount power. Doctrine of Lapse a controversial aspect of East India Company rule was the doctrine of lapse, a policy under which lands whose feudal ruler died without a male biological heir would become directly controlled by the company and an adopted son would not become the ruler of the princely state. This policy went counter to Indian tradition where, unlike Europe, it was far more the accepted norm for a ruler to appoint his own heir. The doctrine of lapse was pursued most vigorously by the Governor-General Sir James Ramsay, 10th Earl of Dalhousie. Dalhousie annexed seven states, including Orwood, whose Norbs he had accused of misrule, and the Maratha states of Nagpur, Jhansi and Sitara, and Sambalpa. Resentment over the annexation of these states turned to indignation when the heirlooms of the Maharajas of Nagpur were auctioned off in Calcutta. Dalhousie's actions contributed to the rising discontent amongst the upper castes which played a large part in the outbreak of the Indian Mutiny of 1857. The last Mughal Badshah, whom many of the mutineers saw as a figurehead to rally around, was deposed following its oppression. In response to the unpopularity of the doctrine, it was discontinued with the end of company rule and the British Parliament's assumption of direct power over India. Imperial Governance by treaty, the British controlled the external affairs of the princely states absolutely. As the states were not British possessions, they retained control over their own internal affairs, subject to a degree of British influence which in many states was substantial. By the beginning of the 20th century, relations between the British and the four largest states a Euro Hyderabad, Mysore, Jammu and Kashmir, and Baroda a Euro were directly under the control of the Governor General of India in the person of a British resident. Two agencies, Farajaterna and Central India, oversaw 20 and 148 princely states respectively. The remaining princely states had their own British political officers, or agents, who answered to the administrators of India's provinces. The agents of five princely states were then under the authority of Madras, 354 under Bombay, 26 of Bengal, 2 under Assam. 34 under Punjab, 15 under Central Provinces and Bera and 2 under United Provinces. The Chamber of Princes was an institution established in 1920 by a royal proclamation of the King Emperor to provide a forum in which the rulers could voice their needs and aspirations to the government. It survived until the end of the British Raj in 1947. By the early 1930s, 
most of the princely states whose agencies were under the authority of India's provinces were organized into new agencies, answerable directly to the Governor-General, on the model of the Central India and Rajatana agencies, the Eastern States Agency, Punjab States Agency, Balochistan Agency, Deccan States Agency, Madras States Agency and the Northwest Frontier States Agency. The Baroda Residency was combined with the princely states of Northern Bombay Presidency into the Baroda, Western India and Gujarat States Agency. Gwalior was separated from the Central India Agency and given its own resident, and the states of Rumpur and Benares, formerly with agents under the authority of the United Provinces, were placed under the Gwalior Residency in 1936. The princely states of Sanda and Banganapal and Misal Presidency were transferred to the agency of the Misal resident in 1939. The principal princely states in 1947, the native states in 1947 included five large states that were in direct political relations with the government of India. For the complete list of princely states in 1947, see List of princely states of India. Equals indirect relations with the central government equals Central India Agency, Gwalior Residency, Balochistan Agency, Rajaterna Agency, Eastern States Agency, Other States Under Provincial Governments. Burma. Burma. State Military Forces, see Article, Indian State Forces, the armies of the native states were bound by many restrictions that were imposed by subsidiary alliances. They existed mainly for ceremonial use and for internal policing. According to the Imperial Gazetteer of India Vol. 4 1907, pages 85. Since a chief can neither attack his neighbor nor fall out with a foreign nation, it follows that he needs no military establishment which is not required either for police purposes or personal display, or for cooperation with the imperial government. The treaty made with Gwalior in 1844, and the instrument of transfer given to Misor in 1881, and like base the restriction of the forces of the state upon the broad ground of protection. The former explained in detail that unnecessary armies were embarrassing to the state itself and a cause of disquietude to others, a few months later a striking proof of this was afforded by the army of the Sikh Kingdom of Lahore. The British government has undertaken to protect the dominions of the native princes from invasion and even from rebellion within, its army is organized for the defense not merely of British India, but of all the possessions under the suzerainty of the King Emperor. In addition, other restrictions were imposed. The treaties with most of the larger states are clear on this point. Posts in the interior must not be fortified, factories for the production of guns and ammunition must not be constructed, nor may the subject of other states be enlisted in the local forces. They must allow the forces that defend them to obtain local supplies, to occupy cantonments or positions, and to arrest deserters. And in addition to these services they must recognize the imperial control of the railways, telegraphs, and postal communications as essential not only to the common welfare but to the common defense. The troops were routinely inspected by British army officers and generally had the same equipment as soldiers in the Indian army. Although their numbers were relatively small, the Imperial Service troops were employed in China and British Somaliland in the first decade of the 20th century, and later saw action in the First World War and Second World War. Political integration of princely states in 1947 and after. Equals India equals, at the time of Indian independence, India was divided into two sets of territories, the first being the territories of British India which were under the direct control of the India Office in London and the Governor-General of India, and the second being the princely states, the territories over which the Crown had suzerainty, but which were under the control of their hereditary rulers. In addition, there were several colonial enclaves controlled by France and Portugal. The integration of these territories into Dominion of India, that had been created by the Indian Independence Act 1947 by the British Parliament, was a declared objective of the Indian National Congress, which the Government of India pursued over the years 1947 to 1949. Through a combination of tactics, Sardar Vallabh Pai Patel and B.P. Menon in the months immediately preceding and following the independence convinced the rulers of almost all of the hundreds of princely states to accede to India. In a speech in January 1948, Vallabh Pai Patel said, 
as you are all aware, on the lapse of paramountcy every Indian state became a separate independent entity and our first task of consolidating about 550 states was on the basis of accession to the Indian Dominion on three subjects. Barring Hyderabad and Janagod all the states which are contiguous to India acceded to Indian Dominion. Subsequently, Kashmir also came in. Some rulers who were quick to read the writing on the wall, gave responsible government to their people. Cochin being the most illustrious example. In Travancore, there was a short struggle, but there too, the ruler soon recognized the aspiration of his people and agreed to introduce a constitution in which all powers would be transferred to the people and he would function as a constitutional ruler. Although this process successfully integrated the vast majority of princely states into India, it was not as successful in relation to a few states, notably the former princely state of Kashmir whose Maharaja delayed signing the instrument of accession into India until his territories were under the threat of invasion by Pakistan, the state of Hyderabad, whose ruler decided to remain independent and was subsequently defeated by the Operation Polo invasion, and the states of Tripura and Manipur, whose rulers agreed to accession only in late 1949, after the Indian conquest of Hyderabad. Having secured their accession, Sada Patel and B.P. Menon then proceeded, in a step-by-step -step process, to secure and extend the central government's authority over these states and to transform their administrations until, by 1956, there was little difference between the territories that had formerly been part of British India and those that had been princely states. Simultaneously, the government of India, through a combination of diplomatic and military means, acquired control over the remaining European colonial enclaves, such as Goa which were also integrated into India. As the final step, in 1971, the 26th Amendment to the Constitution of India withdrew official recognition of all official symbols of princely India, including titles and privileges, and abolished the remuneration of the princes by privy purses. As a result, even titular heads of the former princely states ceased to exist. Equals Pakistan equals, during the period of the British Raj, there were four princely states in Balochistan, Makran, Karen, Nasbila and Khalid. These states acceded with the newly formed Pakistan in 1947. Bahuwalpa from the Punjab Agency joined Pakistan on October 5, 1947. The princely states of the Northwest Frontier States Agencies included the Derswat and Chitral Agency and the Deputy Commissioner of Hazara acting as the political agent for Oman Fura. These states joined Pakistan on independence from the British. See also, Salute State, List of Indian Princely States For a list of Indian princely states at the time of Indian independence, List of Maratha dynasties and states, List of Rajput dynasties and states, List of Indian monarchs, prince and principality For information on princely styles worldwide, Maratha titles, Maratha Empire, Rajaterna. Notes. References. Pagavan, Manu. Princely States in the Hindu Imaginary, Exploring the Cartography of Hindu Nationalism in Colonial India Journal of Asian Studies, 67 No. 3 pages 881 Euro 915 in JSTOR, Copland, Ian, Princes of India in the Endgame of Empire, 1917 Euro 1947. Cambridge and London, Cambridge University Press. Pages 316, ISBN 0-521-89436-0. Harrington, Jack, Sir John Malcolm and the Creation of British India, CHS 4 and 5, New York, Palgrave Macmillan, ISBN 978-0-230-10885-1, Jeffrey, Robin. People, Princes and Paramount Power. Society and Politics in the Indian Princely States 396 pp, Kuman, Dick. Communalism and Indian Princely States, Travancore, Baroda and Hyderabad in the 1930s, 249 pp, Markovitz, Claude. CH21, Princely India. A History of Modern India, 1480 Euro 1950. Anthem Press pages 386 a Euro 409. ISBN 978-1-84331-152-2. Ramusak, 
Barbara, The Indian Princes and Their States, The New Cambridge History of India, Cambridge and London, Cambridge University Press. Pages 324, ISBN 0-521-03989-4, Pokhammer, Wilhelm von India's Road to Nationhood, A Political History of the Subcontinent CH57 Excerpt. Equals Gazetteers equals, Imperial Gazetteer of India Vol. 2, The Indian Empire, Historical, published under the authority of His Majesty's Secretary of State for India in Council, Oxford at the Clarendon Press. PPXXXV, 1 Map, 573. Online, Imperial Gazetteer of India Vol. 3, The Indian Empire, Economic Chapter 10, Famine. Pages 475 a Euro 502, published under the authority of His Majesty's Secretary of State for India in Council, Oxford at the Clarendon Press. pp. XXXVI, 1 Map, 520. Online, Imperial Gazetteer of India Vol. 4, The Indian Empire, Administrative, published under the authority of His Majesty's Secretary of State for India in Council, Oxford at the Clarendon Press. PPXXX, 1 Map, 552. Online. External links, Indian Princely States and Their History and Detailed Genealogy A Euro Roark, Sir Ropa Lethbridge. The Golden Book of India, a genealogical and biographical dictionary of the ruling princes, chiefs, nobles, and other personages, titled or decorated, of the Indian Empire. Macmillan and Company, New York. Exhaustive lists of rulers and heads of government, and some biographies.